Hello and welcome back to the course on machine learning. In today's tutorial, we will find out how we can take our non-linearly separable data set, map it to our higher dimension and get a linearly separable data set, invoke the support vector machine algorithm, build a decision boundary for our data set, and then project all of that back into our original dimensions. So quite a lot to cover. Let's get started. First off, we're going to look at a simplified example. We're going to look at a one dimensional data set. So normally we visualize everything in the PowerPoint with two dimensions uh, to make it you know, look pretty and so that we can uh, kind of understand how it would work in multiple dimensions. But right now that will be a bit too complex for us to start with. So we're going to start with a single dimension. So here we've got the X1 dimension, we've got um, uh, some points here. So we've got nine data points. And as we can see, they are non-linearly separable. So in a uh, in this dimensional, uh, in a single dimension, uh, dimensional space, a linear separator would not be a line it would be a dot, right? So in a two dimensional space, a, a linear, se uh, linear uh, separator is a line. Um, in a three dimensional space, it's a hyperplane, but in a one dimensional space, it's a single dot. So can we separate separate the green from the red with a single dot here? No, we cannot. We if we put it here, then these will be separated from that. If we put it here, it will be separated from that. So this is a non linearly separable data set. Now, how can we apply the method of increasing the dimensionality of this space to make it a linearly separable data set in a higher dimension? That's what we're going to look at. And it might seem impossible, right? So the first time I learned about this for me, it was like, wow, how can you take uh, a non-linearly separable data set and somehow magically increase the dimensionality and you get a uh, linearly separable data set? That you know, sounded like ab absurd, but it is actually possible. And that's what we're going to see right now. So we're going to create this mapping function on the fly. So uh, let's say that this point over here is uh, around five. So uh, this is zero over here. And then somewhere here, we've got five, it doesn't really matter, it can be any number, but just for argument's sake, let's say that this point over here is five, right, and then it keeps going. So our first step to build the mapping function, uh, there can be multiple mapping functions that you can build, I'm just going to show you one that came to my mind. Um, so the first step will be to go f equals x minus five. So to subtract five from our data set. And um, that is going to, uh, what is that going to do? That is going to uh, move everything to the left. So basically, uh, now, um, this is what uh, the result looks like. So if you take five, you subtract five from x, uh, you'll get, you know, like these ones will go into negative, these ones will stay in positive. And then the next step would be to uh, square all of that. So f is now equals to x minus five squared. So how will that all look like? Well, basically, you'll have uh, this uh, squared function going through um, your uh, chart, and then all of these will be projected onto the function. Um, there we go. So that's what it looks like f equals x minus five squared. And now what we want to do is we just want to see that it is indeed linearly separable. So there we go. There's our linear separator. So in a two dimensional space, as we remember, a linear separator is a straight line. And as you can see, this data set became linearly separable in this dimension. I know it's, it's surprising and even a bit shocking, but indeed, it is the case. So you can see that we were able to take this line and separate all of the uh, red, uh, elements or of our data set from the green elements and that's it. And then what we would do next from here is we would project everything back onto our original space and we would know how to functionally separate um, the green from the red. And that is uh, what happens when you map something to a higher dimension. So now knowing this example and seeing that it works in a reality, uh, we can proceed to a higher dimension, you know, to start with a two dimensional space. So let's have a look. So there's our two dimensional space. And uh, basically, you would apply the same principle. So here, you cannot apply, or you cannot invoke the support vector machine algorithm, because it is not a non uh, linearly separable uh, data set in this space. But then you would apply some sort of mapping function. Like right now, we won't go into detail what exactly mapping function it would be. And again, there could be multiple different options and so on. But basically, based on the previous example, we now know that it's possible, like we've seen 
uh, empirical evidence that it is possible to do and the same thing applies to two-dimensional space moving into a three-dimensional space you would map it into a three-dimensional space and then somehow it would become a linearly separable data set in this space and uh, here we've got the new dimension which is z and in a three-dimensional space um, the linear separator is no longer a line it's a hyperplane and so this hyperplane separates the two uh, parts of our data set in the way we want so the support vector machine algorithm has helped us build this hyperplane. And then basically, so we've got this result. Then we just project it back into our two-dimensional space. And we've got this uh, circle that encompasses our um, uh, classes or separates our classes. And there we go. We've got the non-linear separator. So as you can see, we can still, even though we've uh, got a... A bit of a more complex problem where we cannot uh, directly apply the support vector machine algorithm as we used to, we can still go into a uh, higher uh, dimension and then apply the support vector machine algorithm. And um, like we won't go into detail if it's possible all the time and if there's cases when it's not possible and so on, what you would do there. But the point is that uh, there is a solution that you can explore the higher dimensions so that this is not a dead end you can just do that but there's a problem there's a problem with this algorithm and the problem is that mapping to a higher dimensional space can be highly compute intensive so it might require a lot of computation a lot of uh, processing power and you know the larger your data set the more uh, of a problem this can cause and therefore uh, this approach isn't the best because you can imagine like you have a, a data set and then um, mapping it to a higher dimension, performing all the calculations there and then coming back to your lower dimension. That can, uh, even for a computer, not just like in our minds as, as humans, but just like for a computer that can uh, cause a lot of um, delays. It can cause a lot of uh, like processing backlog and issues in in that sense and uh, we don't want that to happen and therefore we're going to explore something else we're going to explore um, a, a different approach which is called in mathematics the kernel trick and uh, that uh, approach is going to help us perform very similar um, uh, gets very similar results but without having to go to a higher dimensional space. Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning and I look forward to seeing you there.